Now as you are familiar with the acids and bases, now we are just going to start with the salt, right. So salt is formed by a reaction or a phenomena called as neutralization reaction. I think the name is cleared uh, like uh, the uh, or you can say the process is cleared from the name that is the neutralization reaction, a reaction will leads to the formation of the neutral substance. So here we go see so whenever we react with acid and base we get to have salt and water. So this is how the salt is formed. So salt is formed at the cost of the neutralization reaction. But you know that uh, this salt actually uh, uh, we have different kinds of salts, right? So sometimes we have the normal salt, we have acidic salt, we have uh, basic salt, we have mixed salt. We have complex salt and uh, moreover we have uh, this thing the acidic, normal, acidic, basic, mixed, uh, complex salt and we have double salt. So likewise we have different kinds of salts. So what do you uh, first of all like before we discuss these types of salt, what do you get to see in the neutralization reaction? So I will state an example, you will be clear from it. Suppose I have an acid HCl and I have a base say NaOH. So what happens? This Na just replace H and just uh, combines with NaCl and H and OH just form the H2O, right? So that means uh, there is a replacement of H from the acid and there is a replacement of OH from the base that occurs which leads to the formation of water and the salt. Now what happens in the normal salt? So whenever the, like you can say all the H ions from the acid and all the OH ions from the base are just replaced, they just get to, we just get to have the normal salt as I have just stated here. So I will just write in again an example, suppose another example H2SO4 plus NaOH we will get to have Na2SO4 plus h 2 as you are unable to see any H or OH in it, so that means it is a normal salt. It is like uh, there is a complete replacement of H ions or the hydroxide ions, H ions from the acid and OH ions from the base has taken place. That is why you just get the normal salt. But when we talk of acidic salt, you know that the partial replacement occurs. So just look at the board how. Suppose we have NaOH and I have HCl. Right. So that means it needs to uh, this thing, uh, uh, this, uh, in that means so it should replace its H and it should replace its OH. But you know what actually happens? Here what we get is, suppose I will just take in another example, suppose we take a sulfuric acid. Right. So what do we get to see like when it replaces this, so there is not proper replacement of the hydrogen ion and we get to have NaHSO4 plus H2. As in this salt you get to see H ions and you know that uh, if any substance contain H ion, so that means when it will be dissolved in water it will definitely going to produce the hydrogen ion and the substance which is uh, produced the hydrogen ion is just regarded as an acid. So that means it somehow the salt should be neutral but in this case the salt is somehow acidic because it contains the replaceable hydrogen, uh, hydrogen ion in it and so that means there is uh, not complete uh, replacement has taken place because the acidic character just rem uh, remain in the uh, molecule so that means it is a acidic salt. And now when we just talk about the basic salt suppose I will just say it again with an example. Suppose we have this base and this acid right so that means this OH ions has to be replaced completely but actually you know what happened so if the reaction take place in such a way that we get to see the hydroxide again ion in the salt, so that means it is a basic salt because improper replacement of hydroxide ion is taken place. So this is that means the salt will have uh, somehow the basic character that is why it is called the basic salt, right. Now when we talk of the mixed salt, mixed salt is actually like for an example uh, it is K4 FeCN whole 6 that is potassium ferrocyanide. So what you get to see in the salt, see K4 FeCN6, what do you get to see? It uh, this thing, 
when it has the you can say a uh, anion more than one kind of anion and a cation in it that means it is a mixed salt now when we talk of the complex salt right when we talk of the complex salt suppose we have the cao cl2 right so here also we get to see the uh, simple cation as well as the simple anion present so that means it is a complex salt and when we talk about the double salt it is just formed by the combination of the more than two or two or more than two simple salts for example we have uh, soda alum so what is the formula for the soda alum it is na2so4 dot Al2SO4 whole thrice and 24H2. So see it is formed from two simple salts. So that means it is a double salt. Moreover we have I have one more example for you that is the potash alum. So what you get to see again K2SO4, Al2SO4 whole thrice and 24H2O. So again it is formed from the two simple salts that is the potassium sulphate and the aluminium sulphate. So they are just regarded as the double salts. So this is what uh, I have shown you in this uh, with the types of the salt that it is not always that you are going to get the normal salt. This may happen that the salt contains the replaceable hydrogen ion or it contains the replaceable hydroxide ion or it is just formed by the combination of two simple salts or it has the more than one acid or uh, this thing cation or the anion in it. So any kind of salt can be formed depending upon the neutralization reaction which is taking place that whether the, uh, the ions are completely replace or there is a partial replacement. So this is how like uh, we just state with the types of the uh, this thing the salts. Now when we just talk about uh, the this thing as I have told you that it is a neutralization reaction. So you must be curious to know where this neutralization reaction other apart from the salt formation where it is used. So you should know that this neutralization reaction is used to reduce the acidity of soil. You know, you know that some plants grow well in the acidic soil and some grow well in the alkaline soil as it just uh, depend upon the demand of the plant which has to be grown. So, but we have a method that we can just reduce the acidity of soil by just adding slaked lime to it. So when we add slaked lime to the soil, the acidity of the soil is just reduced. Moreover, you must have encountered uh, some time with the sting of the yellow wasp. So you know what that what the sting of the yellow wasp actually has? It has an alkali, right? So whenever the, that wasp stings you, uh, just put a, like uh, when you uh, when it uh, bites you, you know that uh, it has an alkali in it. So if you will just apply the uh, acid over it, that is the vinegar, acetic acid, the you will just get a you can say a quick relief because it uh, see the acetic acid is an acid and the, I said that it has an alkali in its sting. So obviously the acid and the alkali just react to form salt and water again it is an application of neutralization reaction and moreover the sting of the ants and uh, this thing the uh, bats you know what they have they have formic acid see the sting of the yellow wasp has the alkali right and the sting of the bats and the, uh, this thing the ants the, they, they have the this thing the formic acid so when you just apply the soap over that area because soap is alkaline in nature so when you have just uh, this thing apply soap on that area so that means alkali will just neutralize the formic acid and you will be getting uh, you will get relief from that Moreover, you, I just told you when we were discussing the uh, uses for the bases, I told you that magnesium hydroxide act, act as an antacid. So again, uh, how it is just acting as an antacid or what is the phenomena behind is again the neutralization reaction. See, when you sometimes uh, the acidity in your body just increase as you all know that in stomach hydrochloric acid is being secreted for the proper functioning of the this thing, the pepsin juice which converts, uh, which just act on the proteins, convert proteins into peptones. You know, know that right but sometimes what happens the uh, due to some reason the acid effect just increase in your stomach right so at that time you feel uneasy so we need to reduce that acidic condition we need to, uh, we need to reduce the production of HCl in stomach that time so what happens we take the anti-acid tablets that time and you know that how that anti-acid tablets work or what are they actually they are actually the basis that I told you that it is mainly the magnesium hydroxide so what is the magnesium hydroxide that means it is a base so when we just take in the, mag the component of it that is the magnesium hydroxide just neutralize the HCl acid which is produced in the stomach and we just get a quick relief right so again uh, this is an application of the 
neutralization reaction. Now, when we just talk about the salt, like uh, we were talking about the salt that how it is formed, how are the types. So, you should be curious to know uh, more properties about the salt, right. So, I just want to discuss few properties with you as we have done already in the previous topic, but still I want that you should be familiar with the uh, properties of the salts again. So, see salt are basically the normal salts are neutral in nature, right. And but we get to see a different kind of salts as I stated with an example. So, first property is that they are are mostly you can say they are neutral that is with pH, uh, pH 7. Second is that they are actually soluble in water most of the salts they are soluble in water that means when we, we just dissolve in water they just get uh, the, this thing dissolved to produce an acid and base again like I will state with an example. Suppose I have a salt say Na2CO3. So, when I will add it to into water, what is going to form? This Na is going to form its hydroxide and this H in CO3 is going to form H2CO3. So, actually it is the reverse of the neutralization reaction. As you say, uh, as you saw this side that when acid and base react, they, uh, they just form salt and water. But when we react salt with water, what, what do we get? We again get the acid at the base and you know this is something called as hydrolysis of salt. That means hydro means water, lysis means breakdown of salt. That means the salt get lysed by water. So, and when the salt get lysed by water, what products do we get? Obviously, we are going to get those products from which it is formed and those products are acid and base. So, that is why just uh, like as a result of neutralization reaction, we get salt and water and as a result of hydrolysis of salt, what we get? We get acid and a base. So, this is how uh, you can say the second property is that, that most of the bases, uh, this thing, the salts are uh, soluble in water and what they do they just show the a uh, kind of hydrolysis of the salt and when we talk about the like when what happens when we pass electric current so most of the salt just get ionized producing their respective ions like we have CuSO4 suppose copper sulfate salt so when I will pass electric current through it obviously it is going to dissociate into the copper ions and the sulfate ions so the aqueous solution of the most of the salts third property is that the aqueous solution of the uh, salts are actually good conductor of electricity or you can say they just get ionized when electric current is passed through it. Now, when we just talk about the nature, so we get to see there are different kinds of salts exhibiting different kinds of nature. See, few salts act as drying agent. Drying agent means they can absorb the moisture. They can just, uh, you can say, they can uh, like if we have the air which contains the moisture in it. So, we have certain salts which can just absorb that moisture making the air dry. So, that means they are used as a drying agent, right. And you know some salts they have the uh, property that when they are exposed to air, Air, they just lost their water of crystallization like few salts as I as you saw in this case there was 24 H2O so that means they have uh, the chemically combined water when we will just expose the salt this kind of salts like uh, if I talk about washing soda suppose washing soda is actually Na2CO3.10 H2O right so when I when I will expose it to air what happen it will just uh, uh, like there is a heat around so what will happen it will just evaporate the uh, this thing the water of crystallization and loss of 9 molecules of water of crystallization not all the water molecules just get evaporated there are few number of molecules of water of crystallization that actually get evaporated and that uh, loss of uh, the water of crystallization when salt is exposed to air is called as efflorescence so again they show they act as a drying agent as I told you and the more other property what they show that they show efflorescence that is they lose somehow some molecules of water of crystallization when they are exposed to air and you know the other property some salts are actually hygroscopic in nature what do you mean by hygroscopic right hygroscopic is that which uh, com, uh, this thing the, when they come in contact with the moisture they actually uh, change their state right so this or you can say they just uh, uh, make the film around it but uh, do not get its states changed so they do act as hygroscopic also and moreover they act as delicucent as well so see the salts have a different kind of nature we get to see a different kinds of salts some are delicate and some are just uh, showing the efflorescence, some are hygroscoping and some are used as drying agent. So, this is the salt actually I think it is clear to you that how the salt is formed, what is the salt hydrolysis, what are the types of salts and what are the properties of the salts. So, this is uh, we have done with the salts now.